Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of Exile build guide. Today we're going to be talking about the Bladefall Blade Blast Poison Assassin. It has been a, a pretty crazy build to play, mostly targeting or oriented around clear speed. I did try it out a bit in the Gauntlet race, the Cicero was hosting with Shopify, had a lot of fun with that, and uh, that was a very, very, very hard league. It was very smooth, and actually it was able to handle that fairly well. It is a very weird playstyle, as you can see here in the gameplay footage in the background during the clearing sequences. Um, the, the way to speed the build up is basically to initiate the smoke mine, and then after smoke mine has been used, to use flame dash. And this consumes one charge of the mobility skills through second wind. However, if you have two charges available, you can cast smoke mine, detonate it, and immediately cast flame dash right after, making it very, very fast. And then you want to use your plague bringer or plague bearer. Uh, you have to initiate it before you start doing the map. And then every time, after one or two packs, you're going to have max uh, poisons from this. And then you should be able to just click the plague bearer and run through enemies, and they will die immediately. Uh, except for rares, where you have to stop to cast the blade blast. Uh, sorry, the blade fall into blade blast, which I'll explain in a bit here. But as you can see in the content here in the background, uh, we have bosses were just dying very, very smoothly, very effectively. I have a uh, the build you're seeing on screen has very low HP. It's a thrown together build, which is somewhere between high budget and low budget. I am not using any clusters uh, on this version, uh, but I'm using a slightly higher chest piece gear for the exploding mod, and that's uh, the Tailwind boots. Uh, other than that, the gear is pretty much uh, scuffed together into a low budget state, and I'll be talking about that in a bit. So basically the way the build works, as you can see, is I'm using Wither Totems, which I'm throwing out on bosses, uh, pre-casting them. We have the Smoke Mine Flame Dash approach for the mobility, and we have the Fla Plague Bearer to get that poison to just let me run through enemies instead of casting Blade Fall into Blade Blast. So the way the build does damage is by damage. casting Blade Fall with Consecrated Ground Effect as well as Cascade, making those blades generated uh, in a set of three different waves. Which means that if I then cast Blade Blast during the time Bladefall is falling down, you're able to explode more blades than the max cap of blades that Bladefall can generate. So therefore you're doing more damage with this combination than if you would rather normally cast the Bladefall and wait for the blades to spawn and then cast Blade Blast, which is why I don't preemptively spawn blades during a boss. I'll just cast it as soon as it's targetable. So basically you cast Bladefall and then you cast Blade Blast and it will explode the enemies and... Um, do poison to them and then they will die and uh, for bosses you cast it several times over and this is kind of a pressuring a lot on your mana pool for lower budget versions you might consider getting a craft where if you focus you have no mana cost uh, I'm using an enduring mana flask and that's kind of enough especially for bosses like Cirrus which you'll see here in the background footage as well um, and basically it's been pretty chill to um, to play with it, uh, but if you don't have enough damage, I would recommend having a focus uh, avoiding mana cost, uh, which you can um, take on. Uh, let's see if I can find it uh, on the benchcraft. Skills cost uh, no mana while focus, which is a craft you can put on the amulet, and that's a four second window where you just put up a no mana cost approach. Uh, during the phases on Cirrus, uh, I've done a couple of other builds that rely heavily on enduring mana flask. Versus Cirrus, first three phases, if you only use one charge of your mana flask, you will get that charge back when the phase ends. So normally you would want to kill the first phase with one flask, uh, mana flask usage. And if you don't do that, then obviously you would want this focus mana cost um, craft. So every time that is available to you, you focus and you'll do the damage. Then you wait till the focus is ready. And that's how you power through the first three phases without causing problems for you when the last phase starts. So that's basically it. The build is very cheap. It's effective. Uh, leveling it has been very smooth. You start off with uh, Freezing Pulse, Storm Blast, Mines or whatever. Till you get to, um, actually, sorry, um, you can do that if you want to. I prefer to use a bow and use a caustic arrow for this one. Caustic arrow and mule appears from the ranger. Use that till you get toxic rain, which is level 12. At level 12, you use toxic rain with blast chain mines and you cast uh, toxic rain mines. You do this all the way till level 38. And the reason you wait till 38 is because the blade blast blade fall combination doesn't really work well until you have the Unleash, which you get at the end of Act 4, I believe, at level 38. So once you're done with, uh, with that, you can actually transition into the Blade Blast Bladefall and level with that from level 38. It's a very, very smooth approach to it. It's very simple. I will be making a forum guide for this, so that will be posted in the descriptions below as soon as that guide is ready. It might not be during the time of the upload of this video, but it will be there in a bit. 
So, uh, we're going to dive into the PUB and show you the gear and skills for this build. And we can start off with the Ascendancy nodes. Um, I would start by getting Noxious Strike once you get level 38. So when you move over to Blade Blast, I would pick up Noxious Strike as soon as possible. Because then you can actually level with this very effectively. And the second node I would take would be Mistwalker to make your leveling speed a much more efficient. It's very comfortable to do this because you can do the Mistwalker when you're higher level, like 60-65. So when you get to the stage of farming in Tabula Rasa, for example, in, uh, in Blood Aqueduct, then you get a Mistwalker for even faster clearing. And then I would pick up Toxic Delivery for more damage. And last but not least, I would go for the Opportunistic to do more damage versus a single target, as well as the movement speed. But you can change and take Toxic Delivery after Opportunistic if you would like to. Leveling the tree, uh, since the uh, abilities we're using for leveling is going to be Caustic Arrow into Toxic Rain into Blade Blast, you can actually never need to deviate from the actual generic tree. So I would start with taking these Chaos and Fist Damage nodes, pick up some Life nodes, and uh, go in through Resourcefulness, Lethal Assault, pick up Blood Drinker, Move down for the face acro acro because that's one of our main sources of defense. And then rush down towards Wind Dancer, allowing us to get that extra dodge. And this is why you want to have as much evasion basis on your character. The character you sh you've seen the gameplay footage of does not have full evasion gear. I threw the gear together, which is why it's a bit more squishier than it should be. And after that, you have two different choices. The lower body version, which is what I remade this build into for the sake of this video, is actually to pick up the bravery, uh, profit chemistry, and constitution and these life nodes over here. My jewelry I'm using is basically a little bit of damage, but most Mostly I took some jewels just to get myself some uh, some resistances on the build that I've been showing you. But normally you would want jewels with life, extra damage, spell damage, whatever. You want to get some damage to chaos and fist damage and damage over time would be very good for this type of build. And obviously after this you want to pick up some evasion nodes, you want to get fatal toxins. When I level this build I tend to prioritize these nodes so I can level with poison early on. And we're going up to pick up both the Atrophy and Force Shaper. These two nodes are absolutely amazing. And then you want to focus on getting some crit, because for low body builds, you might not have the Core Leader Signature Flask. And at that point, especially with Soul Cell Fan, you just spec into Perfect Agony to have that node till you get the flask and then you save those two skill points. For higher body versions, uh, you wanna go for cluster jewels, you'll lose a bit of HP, uh, but if you get three point clusters, such as uh, with Fettel or Flow of Life, which gives you some extra damage, I would probably prioritize Fettel myself for more HP to make up for that little lack of HP. You can go for these nodes and make sure you have three point small clusters to get two more life nodes, because we're kind of uh, low on those. Other than that, the large cluster jewel uh, priority should be the Unholy Might on crit, since we are critting consistently. We will be picking up uh, Wicked Paul, which is, it gives us Chaos Damage, but also Unholy Grace, because that gives us Cast Speed, which is very comfortable, since it's going to require us to cast Blade Fall into Blade Blast, and we don't want to be stationary for too long. Medium Clusters are very straightforward. We use Hemorrhage for 18% damage over time multiplier uh, from crits, since we are creating for the most part. And Septic Spells is absolutely crazy. It gives spells, and since we are using spells, a damage over time multiplier for Poison. Uh, chance to poison hit with spell damage is a bit whatever, but it also gives a cast speed, again, to avoid being locked in place for too long. So two of those, three, four, three passive cluster jewels for life, that's basically the higher body version. These kind of jewels can be rather expensive. Um, and that's kind of the, one of the most expensive pieces that you can go for higher budget versions. The other high budget piece that you would strive for if you go for high budget would be the chest piece. And I'm going to tackle that immediately. The high budget chest piece is basically a life-based evasion uh, base chest piece which is woke orb for frenzy charge on hit together with enemies explode this keeps you safe from porcupines if the evasion and dodge is not doing that alone and it also um, increases clear speed quite significantly and the frenzy charge on hit just increases your damage and clear speed uh, but the main priority should be the explodey for a higher body version for low budget if you can get a frenzy charge on hit great if not just get anything with a high amount of life on an evasion based chest piece and you'll be fine. The daggers are very simple. Cold iron points, super cheap, very easy to farm. Uh, two of these, you can get them corrupted. For example, I got myself one with chance to get a power charge and crit for higher budget. It wasn't that much expensive. I think it cost like five chaos. You can get something with um, increased damage over time and whatnot, but I kept the crit to be prioritized on the other one. Uh, so that's the cold iron points, very easy, and these two increase your damage by a significant, significant amount. It's absolutely crazy how much damage it gives you. Uh, helmet, life, and on a hunter base uh, with uh, nearby enemies have minus chaos resistance, which is crafted through uh, fossils with pristine and I think it's aberrant uh, to get the chaos. Uh, on a 85 plus evasion based hunter piece, 
Obviously, this is for higher budget. For lower budget, you remove the nearby enemy surviving snap and cast rest, and you'll be perfectly fine. Gloves, straightforward there. Hunter base for cast damage over time multiplier with life. Uh, if you can't uh, afford that or want to go for high budget, you want to stick with a low budget, just go for anything that gives you life and resistances or attributes as needed, of course. Always make sure you cap your resistances. The PUB is, uh, I think it added like a million rests somewhere, yeah, just to see the EHP and calcs here. Just make sure you cap your element of resistances and your attributes, of course. Boots, high budget, you want to go for Tailwind. We get elusive through the ascendancies, we don't need that. We just want to have high movement speed, life, and Tailwind. Uh, but for low budget, you skip the Tailwind. Very simple. Amulet, for higher budget, you want to have life and all level, level of dexterity skill gems. This increases your damage significantly. You want to oil corruption, which is not very expensive, so that should go for low budget as well. For low budget, you skip the level of dexterity gems and you call it a day. Just life, rest, and attributes. The uh, higher budget rings should be a despair on hit ring, and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's what you want to have on one of the rings. For low budget, you don't use despair on hit, and you would then, instead of a bottle of faith, use a witchfire brew flask, which applies despair on a blast around you. And for higher budget, you use bottle of faith instead of that, because you have the despair through a ring instead. The other ring, life, rest, and attributes, and that's it. Belt, higher budget, Torn's Reclamation, because it's absolutely insane. I guess you could do Headhunter, I don't think it would bother you using Headhunter for a bit like this, but you could use Torn's Reclamation for lower budget. Darkness of Throne works, but I would rather use a Stygian Vice for more HP and another Jewel. It's a matter of personal preference, what you want to do there. Or Leader Signature replaces the two points of the tree for Perfect Agony. And uh, then you want to have an Enduring Eternal Mana Flask of uh, Staunching Warding or Heat. And then you would have a Quicksilver of Staunching Warding or Heat, and a Life Flask of Staunching Warding or Heat, whereas the Life Flask should be a Seeding Roll, so that it's an instant roll heal. That's literally it. That, it's so straightforward with gearing for this build, it's very simple to play in Soul Cell Farm. It's very easy to play in terms of um, uh, Trade League as well. It's very cheap, very effective, and it's very, very fast. So we're going to go to the skills. We're going to start with the Blade Blast setup, which is your 6 link in your chest piece. And what you want to do is have Blade Blast, increase air effect. Obviously, this PUB is for higher budget. For lower budget, you take away the mod no modifiers that I've said, which includes taking away Awaken Gems. So you want to have Blade Blast with uh, increased area effect. And the reason we have that in our main links is very simple. When we explode the blades, we want to make sure that a boss target gets hit with as many explosions as possible. If you don't use increased area effect or use Conk effect instead, you will have a slight risk of missing some of these explosions, which means you'll deal a lot less damage than a lot less poison stacks. So you want to use increased air effect to make sure you overlap as many explosions as possible. And then we use vile toxins, unbound ailments, deadly ailments, and swift afflictions for the best damage output. We are also using a plague bearer, which I link with increased air effect to make sure that the plague bearer is as big as possible. And I have a blood rage. This is used for lower budget builds to generate the frenzy charges. For higher budget, you don't need the blood rage, uh, as you should have a frenzy charge on hit chest piece. With a totem, spell totem, old totem, with a totem, just to cast out as many of totems as possible. This is two totems, casting out wither, stacking up 15 stacks within about two and a half seconds. Really, really smooth. Gives you a lot of extra damage versus bosses. The um, blade fall strategy is like I mentioned before. Blade fall, unleash, consecrated ground, and spell cascade. This allows us to have uh, as many uh, blades as possible. And I can show you here uh, in game. When I cast blade fall, it looks like this. Casts out the waves. Pretty crazy. However, as you can see here, there's a cap of blades that will be exploded. So if I cast the Blade Blast immediately after casting Blade Fall, it looks like this instead. As you can see, I get much more explosions that way. So basically, this is how the build will look when you're doing a single target. You cast Blade Blast directly after you cast Blade Fall, and you get a ton of overlapping explosions doing shit loads of damage. Auras Skitter Bots for the chill and, most importantly, the uh, shock effect. Herald of Agony, Poison, uh, Flesh and Stone, you have this in Maim to increase the physical damage taken by enemies, and in Enlighten for the higher budget. For lower budget, you could skip the Enlighten, you can skip the Flesh and Stone if needed, and Mobility is the Smoke Mine Flame Dash with a level 6 Arc and Surge and a uh, second win to make sure we get more charges to do the approach of doing the Mobility this way. This only works if you have two charges. If I, if I have one charge, it's not gonna work. You need to have two charges. So you cast Smoke Mine, which takes a charge away. You detonate it and cast Flame Dash right after. And the result is this. Very big movement. The reason we do this is if you cast Flame Dash twice in a row, the second cast will be a casted animation rather than instant. Which means that you are then moving with a cast time instead. And that's what we want to avoid. 
by using smoke when flame dash strat we can make it instant on two different mobility skills directly after one another and make it look like this instead on top of the fact that we get increased movement speed from sm uh, smoke mine making the build very smooth for the sake of clearing that's how that system works and uh, that's basically it you want to be really picky you could add an enduring cry for some endurance charges and have that on left click as you're running uh, but that's basically uh, the build. DPS in the build is very hard to determine because uh, if we assume that we're able to generate 50 explosions during one second and put the blade blast on 50 blades, it tells us that we're dealing 178 million shaper DPS. This is not accurate. This is not what's happening. And if you look at one blade, it's 3.5 million. The thing is with this DPS is that it's taken the average hit as well included. So if you want to calculate the average damage this build is doing, you would have to take the average hit, which would be 14,300. And let's say we are assuming that we hit about 50 explosions in during one second, probably a little bit less, but for the sake of this calculation, I'll show you how you can calculate an estimated DPS. You would take the average hit, multiply that with the amount of hits you think you're going to hit. So let's say 50, that lands on 700,000 hit damage. And then you take the damage per poison, which is 1 million, uh, 330, 875.9 times 50, and plus that damage, which says 67 million. And this is not really accurate, because I don't think we're going to hit that much um, over one second, but we will be able to hit it after a few seconds. And um, yeah, it's just really hard to calculate the, the actual damage that you're doing, uh, because you have to take in the cast rate. We have 4.7 cast rates on Blade Blast, but we have also have to take into consideration Blade Falls cast rate, which is only 3.4 per second, plus server tick rate and latency delays and everything, making this completely annoying. And this also stacks poison doing a little bit of damage as well, but you don't hit all of these. You only hit a couple of them as they're spreading out. To think that we did the proper calculation a couple of days ago and we got the build to be around 19 to 25, 30 million shaper DPS. But again, it's really hard to calculate the exact numbers of it. Anyways, I think this build will be great for both Mayhem, League starters in general. So it works great in both hardcore and softcore, and it's a really fun build to play. I had a lot of fun with it in Mayhem. Uh, well, sorry, in, in Gauntlet Race. And I hope you will too if you try it out. And a forum guide will be posted in the descriptions below as soon as I'm done with it. And uh, yeah, if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay safe. Rocking.